Suppose there's somebody out there. They want to. They want to maybe uh, reignite their love of the Holy Rosary, but maybe it's gone stale. Maybe they just find it repetitive. What, what would you say? Um, well, first of all, I could point them to uh, a deeper understanding of who Our Lady is, because that's the first thing I think you need to know. And uh, I used to think that Scott Hahn's book, Mary, or uh, uh, Hail Holy Queen, Hail Holy Queen, was the best. Uh, I think that it has some competition now in Brant Petrie's Jesus mm. uh, or Ma- um, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of Mary or something to that effect. Right, yeah. yeah, that is also stunningly good. <laughs> I mean, so understanding what God's plan is for her in your life makes a huge difference. <clears throat> then I would say the proof is in the pudding. Start praying it and see what mm. happens. I really do believe that. It is um, a profoundly beautiful way to do Lexio Divina. Mm -hmm. Because essentially what it is, um, in my opinion anyway, is you're sitting at, uh, and it was Catherine Doherty I'm I'm stealing this from, you're sitting with the Blessed Mother at the kitchen table in Nazareth, Mm. and she's explaining to you who her son is. That's lovely. You know, so you're going through, you're meditating on the mysteries as you're asking for her, you know, to bring those virtues into your life, mm. you know, so, you know, you're, you're, first of all, you're saying you're blessed among women and because you perfectly manifest this virtue or this gift or this grace that we see in this mystery, you know, now please pray for me that I would receive this in a deeper way. Mm. So it's intercessory. And I believe that, you know, uh, as you're meditating, you're going to get some guidance. You're going to get some help to, to, to see things you never saw, to have a deeper understanding of who Jesus is as she takes you and walks you into the heart of her son through those, through those beads I, or through those, those mysteries, you know. I also think it's very powerful in spiritual warfare, you know. Um, How so? Or in what way have you experienced yeah, that? Well, for example, you know, so biblically, first of all, most of you would know Mary is the Ark of the New Covenant, Right. Um, just as the old covenant carried, you know, the, uh, the, the staff of Aaron, the mm-hmm. priestly staff, which was dead, which bloomed again, which came to mm-hmm. life, manna. the manna from the desert and the, 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 the table of the law, the words in, in stone. Well, Our Lady carries within her what? She carries the word of God become flesh. She carries the great high priest who is, will die and come to life again and the living bread come down from heaven. She carries that, you know. Um, the very same, there's about uh, five or, I, I think Rene Laurentin said there's 12 allusions mm. to Mary being the Ark of the Covenant in Luke chapter 1 and chapter 2, mm. you know. Uh, went into the hill country for three months and the mm. Holy Spirit comes down, the same Greek word used, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Well, now think about what the Ark was in the Old Testament. Well, first of all, it was a privileged place of encounter with the Lord. The Lord is the Lord of the universe. He's everywhere. But there's a privileged place of encounter because he's there on the mercy seat. Our Lady is a privileged place of encounter. She brings you directly into the heart of I've never heard God. that before. So that's beautiful, beautiful. So powerful. Yeah, that's really good. But also when Israel is at war, where did they put the ark? Uh, they carry it into battle to assure their victory. At the front of the army. Because right. when, the, when the ark is at the front of the army, the battle belongs to the Lord. Yeah. And so I think there's this intuition in the church right from the moment, from the get-go. This is a woman who crushes the head of the enemy. This is, she, she is as terrible as an army in battle array to the enemy. And, um, you know, read, read the lives, read the experts, uh, read the exorcists. You know, I've been involved in deliverance ministry myself to quite a, quite a degree at one time in my life. They hate that woman. The demons fear that woman. There's even a sense in which, as I've heard it read on many occasions, there's even a sense in which they hate her more and are more fearful of her than Jesus. Why? Not because she's greater than Jesus, because she's just the moon reflecting his light, the light of the sun. Um, She's just a creature. But to be defeated by the word of God become flesh is one thing. Right. It would be like if I got into a fight with a man and his wife beat me up instead. That's far more humiliating. Yeah. But to get beaten by a simple creature is, you know, this bag of water that's, you know, Mm. that's... A mere creature, you know, and she defeats him by her humility and she crushes his, like that is just too much to bear. That is mm. too much. So I think another another insight that a priest in my community had 
he was asking the Lord in his own Lexio Divina, he was praying through the Annunciation, why are the words Hail Kakaritomene, which is what it says in the Greek, mm -hmm. which is actually her new name, right? Mm -hmm. uh, she is, and what it means in the Greek is, she who was, past tense continuous, made perfect in grace or transformed in grace, which is also at least an intimation of the Immaculate Conception, you know? Um, probably not strong enough on its own to be a proof, but it's mm -hmm. it's an intimation. Why does that throw the enemy into such such a fit? Why is that so powerful? And the insight came, well, when did the enemy hear those words for the first time? Hmm. When an, one of the seven archangels before the Lord comes and bows before a probably 13 or 14 year old girl, it says, Hail, Kakeratomene. Hail, full of grace. The Lord is with you. And you can just see the head going. Who was promised to come in Genesis? The new woman and her seed who would defeat the enemy and his mm. seed. Here she is. Here she is. Here's the one whose son is going to bust his head and destroy his kingdom. Mm -hmm. So every time we pray the Hail Mary, it throws the enemy into disarray and, and scatters his plans because you're invoking her whose whole job is to mess up his plans. Mm, amen. So when the saints call the rosary a weapon, they're not amen. being hyperbolic. No. Yeah. The scourge of the enemy, I think uh, uh, mm. St. Padre Pio called it, mm, right? Very good, yeah. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you thought about the video.